Um, I was gonna say good evening, but it's so early in the morning now that it's really not evening anymore. But that is beside the point. This is my character, Mr. Guy, I created when I was four. His story has not changed much since its inception. He's an inventor by trade and a widower by fate. Every day he tries new things or invents new things to cope with the loss of uh, his wife and the grief he deals with. Um, I don't know why she got hit by a truck or why I'm sitting around thinking about that at the age of four, but I'm a very well-adjusted person. Thank you very much. <laughs> any of my surroundings are any indication as to my adjustment level? I could go on all week about the plethora of reasons I love film and practical effects, but the main one, other than having been raised on great movies like Jaws, which was my first movie, probably, hands down, um, Jurassic Park, which was my first movie in theaters, see the little ticket? Um, and then Alien, Aliens, Terminator 2, all of that stuff I had a great appreciation for because my father has always been a special effects artist, therefore I was always aware of the science and the magic behind the movies I loved, and still do to this day. He and my mom now run a business where he sculpts likenesses of the Bruce shark from the movie Jaws and sells them to collectors worldwide. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pitch the comic to you. Um, the logline is as follows. In a strange little world where anything can happen at any time, including spontaneously turn from black and white to color, a widower lives a simple day-to-day -day life until he eventually finds that there's a much larger world beyond his own, one that he can only control through direct communication with his own creator. So the series starts out colorfully, then it turns black and white and explains why the world is black and white for a few episodes. This is a nod to the black and white film classics before the world turned color. There are several episodes in every issue, and the episodes are broken up by an intermission, kind of a nod to the classic films uh, and the classic film era, where the film was so long you had to have a break in the middle to go around to the restrooms or whatever and then come back to the movie. So this little guy breaks into his house one evening, and it's a harmless murder attempt, I can assure you. But this leads to the discovery, eventually, of robots taking Mr. Guy's planet over. Why? I still don't know. Do you care? I don't care. Alright, with that established, let's move on. One day he wakes up, and the world turns color spontaneously. He, being an inventor, has a spaceship in his basement naturally, and takes it to the sun to investigate. And from this, he discovers he can go from planet to planet and film photo documentaries of life on alien planets. But the fun does not stop there, because when the world starts to turn against him, you know how they say, his life flashes before his eyes, and this transports him to speak with me, his creator, where we find out that he has rebelled against me and created his own world, which is now turning against him. He has actually put himself into this little world he created and make, made it so that he can't be aware that uh, he's actually in his world, kind of like when you're dreaming and you don't know when you're in a dream. It's really, really dorky, and it's not supposed to be serious or take itself seriously. It's absolutely ridiculous. And here's a promotional poster. Note from the author. We have forced Mr. Guy into this cell, which is just a little too tight for him, and forced him to be a poster just for you. Because anything can and will happen here. You can definitely believe that because it's not a poster. I love sci-fi, but, you know, Star Trek and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm telling you, I just, uh... The spaceship thing has been done, and that's why his looks so ridiculous. It looks like a space shrimp. I mean, it's a cool ship, but it's a space looks like a shrimp. But anyway, he doesn't need a spaceship anymore. He can now teleport places because he's a little god. Um, until I take his powers away. And that's issue four, I think. So <laughs> stay tuned. It gets much more interesting. I'm self-funded, so I'm going to release them as I'm able to, which might very well be quarterly. I don't know. I will hold down as many jobs as I possibly can, take as many commissions as I possibly can to get this work out there. Um, you know, there's, there's that saying, um, when life gives you lemons, I, I haven't even had the luxury of being given lemons, actually. I'm still waiting on the tree to grow and the sugar cane as well, so that I can eventually then make lemonade. But unlike the humble lemon, I'm not sour about this. I know it's a process, and I'll get there step by step. I know what you're thinking. Oh, why don't you take it to this comic book publisher, that comic book publisher? Oh, oh I've already tried them, probably, and just gotten a rejection or crickets chirping. So, you know, rejection is almost a fuel to me. In the meantime, I wasn't waiting to be rescued. I was already marketing myself to the front lines, which are comic book stores. I will soon be on Comixology. I am already on Amazon Kindle. I've done three signings, and I have three more in the immediate weeks to come. I also have a small convention to attend in Houston starting today and ending Sunday called Delta H. As far as comic book stores with my work in them, I'm in Dallas at Titan Comics. In spring, I'm in Killer Kaiju, Fat Ogre, and Our House, The Throwback Shack. In Houston, I'm in Nan's Games and Comics, Dragon's Lair, 
Eighth Dimension, Bedrock City on Westheimer, and Bedrock City on Washington Street, in the Lone Star Heroes in Galveston, in the Woodlands at Space Cadets, and in Conroe, I'm in Cards and Comics Connection. In Washington State, I am in Atomic Comics. In Los Angeles, I am in Meltdown, House of Secrets, DJ's Universal Comics, Golden Apple, Perky Nerd, and Mega City One, formerly known as Melrose Comics and Music. I am proud to say that I will also be attending APE, the Alternative Press Expo, in San Jose this mid-September, and in October, Stanley's Kamikaze. I'd honestly rather come off as aloof than arrogant any day. Um, but you know, what I do is it, a very big deal. Um, I do the work of multiple people, between being the sole creator, character designer, um, layout artist, colorist, inker, letterer, editor. I mean, that, that's a lot of jobs, and I do all of them. I'm the sole person responsible for its existence. I am sitting on three issues worth of material right now. It is. It's a huge deal. As everyone knows in self-publishing, the easy part is actually creating the content, though. The tricky part is getting it out there, where people can see it and appreciate it and have heard of it. Um, that is the real trick. And I have been the recipient of much luck and much kindness of the many comic book store owners and many venues that have my work. I don't take that lightly either. Um, I will say that uh, I do get approached with a question a lot at this point, uh, although I haven't been in the game long enough to be bitter or irritated with it yet. Uh, but, oh, you're inspired by this, aren't you? Congratulations. You were able to um, associate my work with something that allows you to quantify and appreciate it. Great. If you're inspired by something, some things, or someone, why don't you do something with it? I have created something completely different than pretty much anything else out there. Yeah, I'm inspired by some freaking awesome stuff, but this is my work, and I'm proud of it. End of story. Yes, I will continue to show up rogue at these exhibitions and signings. I will continue to infect every corner of the internet I possibly can until everyone has heard my name and knows my comic exists. Toodles! Alright, well, after a generous three hours of sleep in the last 48, I take you to the one corner of my room that the world hasn't seen yet. So here's this painting I did. I haven't really decided on a decent name for it. You've got yourself a moon that glows in the dark, a clock. Um, there's blood dripping off of everything because, wouldn't you agree, gravity has that effect on most liquids. Um, there's a hand behind the eyes, and these guys in the corner here with red eyes, still to this day don't know what they are or who they were. But they weren't a dream, and they weren't a nightmare. This is Web with a View, and uh, this is a 16-track album of music that I'm releasing. You'll notice it is the uh, advertisement you see on the back of the comic. It's called Sorry Little Sharky Volume 1, and it is available for worldwide distribution. You can probably find it on iTunes and Spotify right now. Um, so here's a robot. <laughs> That's all you get. Um, then you've got ones like this. <laughs> you see a giant knife and just like... <laughs> okay, so then there's that one. And this one is sampled from some sounds from one of my favorite video games. Here's one I'm especially proud of that's a couple years old now called Game Changer. I don't feel like I never been it doesn't bother me that it should. It's like massively inspired by video games. Um, here's the karaoke version, so you can see that I'm not yanking your chain. I don't feel like I've ever been in. It doesn't bother me not that it should. But understand that I simply don't need to be understood. From afar I peered into your world I look on but I can never touch If you'd wanted to meet me halfway I know that you would And I'm not 
gonna sing the whole song for you because I'm not your circus monkey. Here is Sanguinity. Ba -ba -da. Where I'm gonna freakishly harmonize with myself and creep you out even further. Riding just above the waves, clouds enough to feel the ocean spray. And the music video is way funner, <laughs> which I will demonstrate here in a little bit. So yeah, cover, meet world, world, meet comic book cover. The music ad I was talking about on the back of the comic. Here is art of the comic cover before I did the, uh, I couldn't resist the War of the Worlds critter, you know, the Martian. I couldn't, I couldn't resist making it the same colors as that guy. <laughs> Here's the art from before it was colored, kind of. It's when I first scanned it in. Yeah, kind of just piece things together page by page. Looks rough. That was when it was originally just this many 
cells on the page, and I consolidated the pages. That was an original page. That was an original page. So, there you go. I think that's enough of that. I think what you want to see next is probably my music. So, let's see. What doesn't need the disc? Because I lost the disc, unfortunately, all the times that I've moved. <laughs> Why is it? Give me a sec. But if everything fails, as these things tend to do, and there's no going back to everything that I ever knew. And I don't have the speakers hooked up to this computer, it's the old one, so. Well, that's all for now. Good night, stupid children.